Speaking of how Rishi handles things, it is a whole year since he became prime minister. It seems like so much longer, doesn't it? Uh, and he stood on the steps of Downing Street and promised us a government of integrity, professionalism and accountability at every level. Now, you've written a school report for him in the paper today, John. Can you tell us where we've seen any integrity, professionalism or accountability? Because I seem to have missed it. Yeah, I think that is one of the bits where he has really struggled. There are a lot of Tory MPs who were hoping, well, a lot of Tory MPs, lots of ordinary members of the public were hoping after the chaos of Boris Johnson and Liz Trust that Rishi Sunak would be able to draw a line under all of that mayhem and would bring a period of calm, but partly thanks to the collection of people he decided to make ministers. We have seen the continuation of sleaze scandals. Remember Dominic Raab, the Deputy mm. Prime Minister, who was kicked out over bullying. Gavin Williamson lasted just two weeks in the Cabinet before he got removed over bullying claims. And then we had Nadine Zahawi, who was the Tory party chairman until it turned out that he may have not been quite upfront about his taxes. And so there has been this steady flow of rows. And then remember Rishi Sunak himself has had his own problems with sleaze. Uh, there was when he got fined for not wearing the seatbelt in the back of the car. There's when he got told off by the Commons uh, sleaze watchdog for not properly declaring his wife shares in a childcare firm that was going to benefit from announcements his government had made. And I think that you look at, he really did have an opportunity to show he was a new broom and a break from the past by taking on Boris Johnson when that report came out over his party gate lies. And instead, rather than do that, Rishi Sunak decided to sit on his hands. So I think on the idea of integrity, professionalism and accountability, things haven't been going great. But with all school reports, you've got to find something that is a bit positive. I think <laughs> uh, Brexit is one of the areas where it has, obviously, there's still a lot of problems with Brexit. But one of the areas that had been a real nightmare had been those uh, negotiations with Brussels over trade arrangements for Northern Ireland. That is somewhere where we did finally see progress. He held those talks with Ursula von der Leyen, the EU uh, Commission Chief uh, in Windsor. They signed this thing called the Windsor Framework to sort that out. So there has been some positive moves. But you look at a lot of the areas that affect normal people, things like NHS waiting lists, schools. Mm crime, um, all of those things aren't particularly going that well at all. You look at prisons now fell to bursting. We don't have room to lock up all the people that we would have done in the past. School, you've obviously had the rat crisis. There's now more than 200 schools, but it's found there's been dodgy concrete. And then NHS, one of his big promises at the start of the year was that he's going to bring down waiting lists. And actually the numbers keep going up and up and up. I think we're now at 7.7 .7 million people waiting for operations. And if you're one of those people who've been waiting for months and months and months, possibly years for something like a hip operation, that is complete misery. Yeah, very much so. And kind of thing that makes you housebound and increases the general cost of living and uh, makes your conditions worse as well, I would have thought. Now, Steve says, morning, Steve. Sunak will always pander to the rich while refusing to meet the nuclear test veterans and their families. We do not create wealth for him. Don't make many votes either, perhaps, Steve, which is part of the trouble. Um, I mean, there are a number of things which uh, are on Rishi's desk, which he could arguably do something about and, and look better for. I mean, what do you think, everybody? How do you think Rishi's first year has gone? Has he done his best with a very difficult situation? He did inherit an absolute skip fire, didn't he? Um, has he done well considering, do you think? Or has he just managed to mishandle the whole thing? I mean, the grades you've given him, John, are Fs and Ds. You know, he's failed at sleaze, as you said. He's lost quite a lot of by-elections as well, largely because of the behaviour of the previous Tory incumbents, which has all been fairly sleazy. Um, he's doing pretty badly at maths because halving inflation, which he may be on course to do, is not quite the same thing as bringing prices back down. I mean, as you report, there are a bag of sugar, 60% more than it was last year. So, you know, people are still paying very high prices. And of course, he's flunked engineering because of the, the roofs of public buildings are in serious danger of falling down after a decade of maintenance cutbacks, a lot of which he was responsible for. I mean, it, it's probably quicker to ask if there's anything he's done well at. And I suppose the best you can say about him is he has actually managed to turn up and he's outlasted lettuce, hasn't he? He's been there for more than 49 days. Let's give the man a round of applause. 
Yeah, I mean, he is still there. I mean, we've got to the year point, he is still there. But I think that many voters, particularly in those areas that voted Tory for the first time in 2019, those areas we call the Red Wall areas, a lot of those when they voted in 2019 were told that levelling up was going to completely transform their areas, that were going to get all this attention that had been neglected for years on end, that were finally going to have investment and have their areas turned around. And instead of getting that, we saw those announcements at Tory conference on HS2 cancelling it. And they said they were going to spend 36 billion on all these different roads and rail projects. I think there is a lot of cynicism around those that many of these bypasses have been promised many times before have never actually Mm. happened. And I think that one of the problems the Tories have got is when a lot of people look around their local high street, they think that, well, they are not they aren't particularly better off than they were before. There are a lot of empty shops. We know that some big retailers have gone bust, people like Wilkinson's. Um, and so, yeah, I think a lot of people, when they think about their own local area, they just think mm, not much has changed for the better in the last few years once since uh, that 2019 election. And as you say, I think when you look at the poll numbers, the Tories are trailing Labour still. Richard Sinat was obviously hoping that he'd come in, bring some stability and that he'd be able to turn that around. And that's not really happened. And you look at something like the Tory party conference, which usually might be an opportunity to get some attention from people who aren't always paying attention to politics you look at the announcers, what did he say? He said he was going to cancel HS2. He said that he might muck around with A-levels and T-levels in about 10 or 12 years' time. And he said that he was going to gradually raise the age of smoking. And I think for a lot of people, those are not going to be the issues that decide the next election. What is going to decide the election is whether they feel better or worse off in their pocket. And despite inflation gradually coming down, prices aren't coming down and mortgages, rents, everything else continues to go up. And I think that a lot of people think, well, I don't really feel better off at all. No. Well, what did you agree, everybody? How's that past year been for you? Alan wants a general election right now. Um I mean, Annie says, it's a shambles. I have a few Fs and Ds for him myself. Have a general election right now. Do you think, is there anybody out there who thinks their life has improved in the past year? I think even Mrs Sunak will probably say she's got poorer in the past year because she's had to start paying tax. Um, but what do you think, everybody? Is there is there anything we can say that things have changed? Or generally speaking, in the past year, have you gone to get a little bit poorer? I mean, when Rishi Sunak took over, I think his personal approval poll ratings were about minus three, John. And today they're about minus 20. 20. I mean, when Keir Starmer faces him at the dispatch box today, Sunak's probably going to want to talk to him about Gaza and Israel because that's causing him some problems within the Labour Party. But Starmer is going to want to go on what you've just written, which basically which is Keir Starmer's school report for the past year, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's probably quite likely. I mean, the last couple of PMQs have been pretty... Um, not sure sedate is the word, but they've not been as hostile as sometimes PMQs can be. That's because there is a lot of agreement on both the Tory and the Labour side on the situation in Gaza and how, you know, Israel obviously has suffered this horrific attack. They've got the right to defend themselves. There's questions about what they do to defend themselves, though, uh, and that has caused more disagreement. But I think as it does mark one year today, I think it is probably quite likely you will hear some sort of reference to that from Keir Starmer. And I think that there's plenty of ammunition there on different things that haven't gone particularly well in the last year that he could choose from to highlight. Yeah, exactly. Now, it's also, it's got to be said, as many people will point out, I mean, Steve says, I've seen my family's money shrink in real terms. It's harder to keep the lights on now than ever it was. Um, some people, a lot of people point out, of course, that Rishi was unelected. He's kind of taken the job of head prefect without any particular mandate. In fact, he's ripped up some of the manifesto from 2019, having not been elected to his position by anybody very much. Ricky says, my mortgage has increased £200 a month. Thank you, Lionel Rishi. <laughs> uh, there may be uh, Liz, Liz Trust that you've got to thank for that. Um, and in his position as head prefect, I suppose, one of his jobs might be to sort of rein in the behaviour of some of the more troubling elements in the school, uh, like Suella Braverman, like Nadine Dorries, like Liz Truss, people who are doing things that they, you know, cause problems for the party. Uh, but under his leadership, you know, how's the party doing in general? 
it, internally in Parliament? What do you see? Are they are they match fit for a general election? I know what you're going to say to that one. I think no is the answer <laughs> to that one. Um, and I think the closer we get to the election, if you don't start to see the polls narrowing, then a lot of Tory MPs will obviously be worried about their own jobs. And I think that's when you might get the rows getting even more other problems potentially down the road. Uh, the Rwanda scheme, we're still waiting to hear from the Supreme Court whether that is allowed to go ahead or not. I think that if the Supreme Court says it's not able to go ahead, then you will have calls from some within the Tory party on whether we leave the European Convention of Human Rights. And I think that will be a really divisive issue for the Tory party because there will be some MPs on the Tory side who said that would be a great um, uh, idea. There'll be some MPs on the Tory side who think that would be absolutely awful and be going way too far. And I think that would cause massive splits within the Tory party themselves. I think there's a whole load of issues that you will see rows on the closer we get to the election if you haven't started to see things start to turn around. Exactly. And then it's a, in the question of whether or not he, he leaves it a bit longer in the hope that something will, will turn, some kind of event will happen that will turn the situation around for him and he can save a few seats or maybe even get to hung parliament. Or he goes sooner and limits the damage to the Conservative Party reputation for a generation. We'll have to see, won't we? Rishi Sunak does at least, I suppose we could say, if we're being a positive teacher, you have to give these things called a a thingy sandwich we have good stuff at the beginning the terrible news in the middle and some good stuff again at the end to make it a bit more palatable to the snowflake students he does do his homework but it's got to be said he doesn't seem to have many working class friends and not much has really changed for Rishi Sunak I think in uh, not only in his period in school but also over the past 30 years he's pretty much the same as he's always been um, but get us into comments anybody if you've got any oh, you thought you were going to end on a good thing there Susie well, um... he does his homework there you go he does his homework <laughs> And he turns up, but he's he's in a helicopter, so he can't really complain that the bus was late, can he? Now, <clears throat> get into the comments, everybody, if you want to have anything else you want to say about Wishes to next first year in power. Uh, well, perhaps only year in power. We'll have to see how it goes, won't we? Uh, but first off, oh, Steve's back again. The Tories can't win a general election as they are. Their only hope would be a leadership change, but that probably wouldn't work either. I think at this stage, Steve, if they had another leader, the whole bloody country would be out on the streets because that's just not they're not going to go. They've had three in about two years, or no, one year even. So it's, it's not going to swing, I think, another leader. I don't think they've got anyone left who wants the job anyway.